Welcome to another edition of Portfolio Briefing. I'm Mark Dunn, editor of Portfolio Institutional Magazine, and I will be the host for this interview, which looks at ESG, and especially the performance of ESG funds and strategies during what's proved to be such volatile times for markets. With me today, we have the return of Margaret Child. Margaret, of course, is head of ESG Canada at Manulife Investment Management. Hi, Margaret, how are you? I'm doing great, Mark. Thanks so much for having us. No problem, good, good. And also joining us today is Fred Isler, the Director USA, ESG Research and Integration, also at Manulife Investment Management. Hi, Fred. Hey, Mark, thank you for having me. Appreciate it. No problem. I understand that you're speaking to us um, from, from the Boston area in the US. Um, how are things there for you at the moment? Um, in terms of the, the, the COVID, I mean, we've, we've been uh, in lockdown for a while. Things have started to dissipate and the things are beginning to open up. So overall, things aren't bad. Good, 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 good. Okay. And the main thing I, as I said at the top there, the main thing I want to do is understand exactly what's happening with ESG at the moment. So could you just give me some kind of overview, uh, Maggie, if we start with you? I mean, um, how the various sustainable strategies and funds that, um, that you're seeing in the market, how they're performing during this crisis? Sure, I think we're seeing a lot of evidence coming out of the market right now in terms of positive performance for, for example, on ESG indices mm -hmm. are doing very well compared to uh, regular benchmarks. Um, so I think that overall, there's been a lot of uh, positive receptivity to underscore the, the positive benefits of ESG um, more broadly. Um, there's also been a lot of uh, positive uh, steady inflows into ESG funds that are, are um, logging better than average returns. Uh, so for example, even though the S&P 500 was, was down 11%, we saw um, ESG funds um, with that benchmark uh, outperform. Uh, our approach at Manulife Investment Management is a bit broader in nature in that our, we provide uh, ESG integration to all of our clients across the board. We believe that integrating ESG into our strategies is providing us a, with a fuller risk reward uh, profile for our investment opportunities. And we've seen a lot of benefits from that approach going into the pandemic and the market turmoil. Um, which has put our managers in, in a good position and highlights our uh, advantage at, pro, at providing enhanced risk management through ESG factors. Uh, Fred, did you want to add anything there? Um, no, I, I think the, the interesting thing that I would say is we've seen that the market uh, obviously has seen a sharp recovery over the last couple of months. And, and when we look at these sustainable funds, we do see that in an up cycle like this, you know, they tend to maybe slightly underperform because the lower quality names are going to perform better. But I think when you look on the on the whole, it'll be interesting to look at the end of this year through this through this pandemic, how did these sustainable funds uh, perform? Okay, guys, um, is this crisis the first real test of ESG sustainability sort of risk mitigation credentials um, since the credit crunch? Uh, well, Matthew, I mean, it's... it's Sure. Yeah, it's an interesting question. I think there's ESG is not new anymore. Uh, it's been around for a long time. I think we've seen permutations as to the terms used. Uh, we, we've moved from using a term such as socially responsible investing to more to terms such as ESG and ESG integration. Uh, the principles for responsible investing as investment started in 2006 with a handful of investors in a stuffy room and in New York and fast forward to today, we now have over a hundred trillion in assets under management that have signed on to the PRI and over 3000 signatories globally. To give you a sense of, of how that's the momentum that's being gathered there, uh, we joined the PRI in 2015 and the number of signatories has pretty much doubled since then. So I think uh, even before the pandemic, we saw strong support for ESG's risk mitigating credentials. Um, but certainly through this pandemic, I think we're expecting to, to see a, a further major implications for the future invest of investment stewardship. There's a lot of attention being paid by investors, media, other stakeholders to how companies and even investors in turn are, are reacting. 
uh, whether it be on issues such as employee health and safety, uh, executive pay, um, other social issues, even environmental issues. We've seen a lot of focus on, on climate change as well through the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So we do believe that this is uh, continuing to provide benefit to the market to have a strong ESG approach. And this will help us create longer term value creation. What about you, Freddie? Are you seeing the same sort of thing or ESG fund strategies proving their worth during this crisis? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think Maggie, Maggie said it well. Gotcha. Okay, guys. Um, so what exactly in an ESG sustainable world are investors asking for? That's asking for something quite general, bearing in mind that ESG is quite a broad church, or they're looking for things like to do with the environment or the social element or governance element or equality. What, what, are, they, what are they looking for? So I think, uh, you know, as I, as I noted, we are seeing kind of an evolution of the approach to ESG over time. I think in the earlier days, going back a, a few decades, it, it was more of a blunt approach of uh, looking at um, the portfolio through a lens of do no harm, where exclusions would be applied to the portfolio. And that raised concerns around the ability to um, achieve market market returns or even the ability to outperform the market. Uh, this is, has permeated, permutated over time to an approach of ESG risk mitigation and integration um, where material ESG factors are considered uh, for all investments to enhance that risk return profile. And as we move forward into the future, I think, I think we will continue to see an evolution in the approach to ESG and sustainability. Uh, with more of a focus on um, looking at the positive social, uh, social and environmental uh, impacts from a portfolio that can be achieved in, mm -hmm. across the public and private markets. And Fred, I mean, Maggie just talked there about an evolution going on and happening there. I mean, what are you seeing in terms of what's proving popular at the moment? Yeah, I mean, popularity in terms of, I think the social movement is... Um, is obviously going to pick up steam. I think over the last few years, we saw environmental funds, the focus on that was really um, kind of paramount. And a result of this pandemic and then the equality issues that we see going on inside the U.S. is leading more towards uh, a focus on social. And that social could be towards employees, towards diversity. And at the same time, I think ultimately they're going to be intertwined. Right? We're not going to be able to just focus on one. It's going to have to be, you know, for example, environmental justice, right? Making sure that it, it plants, facilities in, in certain areas are run just as well as they would be in, in Manhattan, for example. So I think that's something that we're going to see. And we're going to be, investors are going to be asking companies to focus on this. Yeah, yeah. It's quite interesting. One of the, one of the sort of, the, the sort of side effects of, of these sort of times we're living is that um, climate change is no longer the default conversation between investors. It's now more talking more about the social elements of what happens when um, when when the, the virus is over and we get back to normal. And of course, with the whole Black Lives and Matters movement at the moment, it's, it's quite interesting to see how that's going to develop. Um, well, one interesting point actually about about this sort of funds and things like that is that when it comes to stewardship and when it comes to engagement, I mean, if you've got so many investors all in your fund, how do you keep them all happy from a from a, an engagement point of view when you know you're now going there and talk to your portfolio companies? Um, Fred, it, it yeah. just sounds to me like I mean, quite a tough task. So, a active ownership is a very important piece of our responsible investment program here at Manual Life Investment Management. Not only not only does our we our dedicated ESG team conduct engagements. But also our investment teams, the portfolio managers and the analysts are also conducting engagements. And our, and our investors are particularly interested in, the, in our engagement discussions with companies and the outcomes that we are striving to obtain. They want to understand what are the issues that we feel are material to business and then how are, we, and how are these companies beginning to mitigate or attempting to mitigate these types of, uh, of, these types of issues. You know, you look at how the progression of this has changed over the last 20 years. I mean, you, you know, investment stewardship like ESG was largely restricted to a few active socialist investment firms and church funds engaged with companies on social environmental issues. Today, stewardship and ESG is a central piece of our investment management with all major institutional investors. So your question around keeping them happy, 
it, it, you know, it can be challenging, but we do think we have a sophisticated engagement approach and um, we, we are certainly striving for, uh, for outcomes across all industries. And Maggie, how, how big of a challenge is this for you? Well, I think we're going to see an increase in collaboration and a, a sense of, of really trying to work together across all stakeholders. Um, so there's some pretty uh, big challenges that we need to um, deal with, both uh, environmentally, socially, and economically as well. And it's not just up to investors to get it done. It's also up to other uh, stakeholders and government to work together. So I do think we're going to see an increased focus on, on stewardship, on collaboration, and uh, working towards positive change over the long term. Um, now, one of the problems, as we, as we said at the beginning, um, ESG is quite broad church. There's a lot going on here, and, and these times we're living have, have highlighted that. Um, now, some funds have actually had faced criticism, saying maybe they're not as low carbon as they should be, and that sort of thing. And then the lack of a definition, I think, is probably the problem here of exactly what is a low carbon fund. Um, do you think it's possible to have a pure ESG fund launch that you know, that everyone's happy with? Because, as I say, there are so many different factors taken into account. Maggie, is that possible? It's a great question, and I'd say that there's many different views on what constitutes, uh, to use your term, a pure ESG fund. Mm -hmm. At Manual Life Investment Management, we put a lot of thought into it, where we're looking very closely at how we can provide differentiated, credible, high-quality ESG funds. Um, but it's important to note that it's, it's very much a personal decision as to what constitutes a, a pure approach for that individual investor. And they really need to understand the approach of the manager in question and make sure that it aligns with their, their goals and values from an ESG fund. Yeah, I, I, to pick up on Maggie's point, I, I think that that's extremely important, right? Because of how broad these definitions are. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, the manager needs to be very explicit in terms of what is the strategy of the portfolio and what are the restrictions in terms of securities that you can invest in? Is it based off of geography? Is it based off a of sector? Or is it based off of, for example, you know, limited to uh, the carbon intensity of, of a particular company? So these are all important questions to understand. And I think mm -hmm. some of the bad press that comes out is when investors don't, didn't fully understand what the intention of the portfolio was. So for example, Mark, we, we have uh, some of our clients have asked for fossil fuel free strategies, which we are able to run and, and happily do so. Um, but we also want them to understand that that is essentially removing their ability to uh, engage with these companies um, by removing their ownership of the companies to, to create that change over time, which we feel is a really important contribution to the overall transition to a low carbon economy. Okay, guys, and finally, what can we expect from Manual Life coming up in the, in the coming months in this area market? What have you guys got planned? Well, uh, we're certainly working hard on our, our thoughts on creating uh, best in class, differentiated, uh, credible um, ESG funds. So that's, that's an area of, of uh, focus for us. Um, we're also working on our, our latest um, sustainable and responsible investing report. So please stay tuned for that. And we'll provide some uh, uh, further disclosure around our approaches to the TCFD, the Task Force on Climate Related Financial Disclosure. Uh, we're also expanding our team, actually. Um, we're, we're looking to expand our team here in Canada and, and globally as well. Uh, so lots of exciting things that are happening at Manulife Investment Management. And we really just have a, a, you know, a deep commitment to ESG integration, to creating long-term value for our clients. Yeah, I'd just like to kind of build off of what Maggie said there. We're, we're, you know, you're not going to see Manual Life Investment Management roll out 50 ESG products and sustainable funds. That's not our approach. We're laser focused on integrating ESG through our investment process because, it, because we believe that it provides a better risk reward profile. Okay, Maggie, Fred, great speaking to you again about this. Thank you very much for your time and uh, we'll stay safe, yeah? You Take as care. well. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Bye-bye.